All right, we're back for another artist problem because you've got problems and I've got answers and I've got problems and I'm dealing with them. So today we're going to talk about tools any acrylic artist should have, right? Uh, and again, we will not be going over the obvious. Obviously, you should have paint. Um, you should have something to paint on. But we will be talking about some specialty tools because obviously you may probably want to use a brush, um, but I want to make sure you're using the right brush. So we're going to be talking about the tools that any acrylic painter should have and um, the focus here is really to give you the best experience, ease of experience, performance. I mean these are the items that um, I've kind of curated, put together that I think will give you the maximum uh, benefit of painting with acrylic paint. All right? All right, let's just cut to the intro. Da, 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 da. So one of the first things that I want to stress when using acrylic paint, because acrylic paint is a form of plastic more or less, is that if you are using natural hair brushes, you're probably spending more money than you need to on brushes because synthetic brushes are ideal for acrylic paint. Plastic hair, plastic paint, what can go wrong? Now there are different levels, just like with natural hair, you can buy kind of, you know, the lesser expensive natural hair and the more expensive uh, natural hair. With synthetics, the technology has increased dramatically over the years. And really, if you want um, the experience of painting with bristle, you can have that. And the reason why, so like, for example, these are the, um, the Berlin brushes. This is a synthetic kind of like hog. And these are the brushes that you would use if you want, sorry, there's still starch in them. Um, these are the brushes that you would use if you wanted to paint like thick impasto, uh, retain brush strokes, and these are high performance brushes, okay? The, there's still plenty of very, very cheaply made uh, synthetic brushes all over the place, but we really, um, we wanted to find brushes that would give you ultimate performance because um, especially if you were previously using uh, natural hair, we wanted you to have that benefit of what you felt was like the, the performance of that high-end brush, but the ease of the cleaning. I mean, one of the biggest things is cleaning out um, synthetic hair with acrylics is uh, a lot easier. And really, it's, it's more resilient. So um, if you wanted something thick, impasto, retaining brush strokes, the, the Berlin, we have these. Um, where did that go? Oh, right there. Isn't that pretty? Uh, if you want something with a little bit more um, smoothness to it, less brush strokes, uh, kind of more of a, a smooth mark, um, the staccato brushes. These are very high-end, well-made. I mean, you know how like you can just kind of hold on to something in your hand and feel if it feels cheap, you know, it kind of feels cheap to you. These brushes really feel solid, and uh, I think that it kind of shows up in the uh, the paintings that you make with them. So yeah, your thicker painting up here, you know, you can use your Berlin brushes um, if you want kind of softer, uh, you know, more luxurious feel. The the staccato, even softer. We've got like the black swan brushes. A lot of options, synthetic. Um, no natural, no animal hair, all hair made of plastic. And one of the things that makes a, a high-end synthetic brush unique that kind of helps it mimic that of a natural hair brush is in the past, every single piece of synthetic hair was uniform, right? But we've learned through science and microscopes and I guess time that hairs are not all uniform. Some are a little bit thicker than others. Some are a little bit thinner. And so it's the same with these synthetic brushes. And that's part of the, I guess, magic of why natural hair brushes perform the way they do because of that variation. So they've added that variation into these synthetic brushes. Okay, I think that's enough on brushes. The tool that you should have, if I, if I haven't made this clear, is a synthetic hair brush. Number one, again, I, we're talking about ease of use, performance. A synthetic brush for acrylic painting is something that every artist should have that's painting in acrylics. Hey, we just talked about brushes. We just talked about brushes that are high end, probably invested some money in these bad boys, right? Let's keep them clean, let's keep them safe. Chelsea Classical Studios Lavender and Olive Oil Soap, okay? I love this stuff. It'll work on synthetic hair, it will work with natural hair, cleans the brushes beautifully, uh, works well, highly recommend it. It's a tool that I think that every artist should have because you want to protect the investment you've made in your brushes especially if you've invested in high-end brushes. And even if you haven't invested in high-end brushes, 
it probably just means that you want to maximize the use of the brushes you have that much more. So buying yourself a soap that really, really gets that gunk out because once a little piece of acrylic dries towards the base, the brush might start just fraying everywhere. So keeping your brushes clean, keeping it clean, like I try to do on these videos, is important. So I think that everybody should have a brush cleaner that's invested in quality brushes. That is obnoxious. Acrylic artists, just like any other painter, need a certain kind of palette, okay? Some people just use paper plates. You know, use what, what works best for you, okay? Uh, that's within your budget. But I think that it's important that an artist invest in a palette that is ideal for their working system. So for example, if you are the kind of artist that does a little bit of painting and then you wanna come back to it later. Now, let's just face it, with acrylic paints, you are on the clock, okay? Acrylic paints are going to dry quickly. They are one of the fastest drying, and when they dry, they are dry. There ain't no re-wetting it unless it's a very specialty kind of acrylic paint, but we're just talking about you know straight up acrylic paint right now. So having a palette that's airtight, this is our Acrylamizer palette. I um, actually really love this palette. Um, if you go to our, uh, the, the Jerry Zodorama page, um, there's a video that I filmed with my grandfather, Jerry, um, gosh, it was like 11 years ago, uh, where he talks about this palette. This is one of his favorite products, so it's special to me. Um, and so if you're the kind of artist that you know needs to save the paint, make sure that you have something like this that will keep your paint fresh. Now, if you want something that will help you, these um, gray palettes right here, all right, let me sit, put that so Will can see it. All right, so the paint on this palette is the same as it would be on you know, uh, a disposable palette, a paper plate, except for A, it is gray, which is a neutral tone, which is good for the eye. And uh, B, just like, well, the acrylamizer in this, the acrylic paints, when they dry, peel off real nice and easy, real easy clean. Um, and it's less wasteful because you reuse it. I mean, let's face it, if you're using a disposable palette or paper plates, that's creating waste. And I'm enough of a waste of space as it is. So we want to uh, make sure that we're doing the best we can with what we got. Now, when you have paints on a palette, okay, whether it's one of these palettes that seals are tight or it's a palette that sits open like this, okay, while you are painting, another tool that you should have is a light mist. Now, I have been very adamant about the use of water with acrylics in previous videos, okay? Water is the cleaning tool, not the medium, all right? Now, we'll get into that a little bit later. But I'm gonna kind of break that rule a little bit because I don't even follow my own rules. Um, one of them was to not wear the same shirt twice. Uh, so, you know, you can't listen to me. What are you doing here? I, I think I just defunct the whole video. Let's just cut that whole thing out. Um, but it is okay in slight moderation to use water. Now, when you have acrylic paints sitting out, missing them periodically will prevent them from skinning up, okay? And there's a lot of great little tools. I mean, you've got this little Soho spritz bottle, this is like a, oh, there we go. It's just nice, just nice little, eh, 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 eh. okay. Now, this is new. Is this the right one, Katie? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the Aqua Mist. I love this thing. Watch this. Is that nice? Ming, come here, let me spray your hair. Turn away from me so you don't look me in the eye. Then it's weird. Is that nice? <laughs> what am I talking about if you haven't been following my videos on acrylics? Um, there has been a lot of arguing going on, people telling me I'm wrong because, well, I'm not perfect, but I'm not wrong about this, okay? I did a whole video about how you do not want to use water as your medium, okay? Why don't you want to use water as your medium, okay? I'm sure you guys in here can probably repeat it because I've said it so many times because it breaks down the structural integrity of the paint. Now. Some of you have said, well, Golden's done research. And they say, no, you can use water. Well, yes, you, you can. You can do anything you like. You can use orange juice. I know I've tried it. Here's the analogy I want to give, in case you haven't heard of this before, okay? When it comes to water. Acrylic paint, especially, especially like mediums, okay? Because what I'm talking about is you want to use an acrylic medium because it doesn't break up the uh, acrylic polymer so it dries correctly, waterproof, won't crack, won't you know, do any of those negative things because it's adding acrylic to acrylic instead of water to acrylic, diluting it. I want you to imagine that this is a bottle of glue, okay? Now, you use a little glue. 
Now, let's pretend that this is actually a, like a booze and you're underage, right? Nobody underage should do this. Well, you don't want people to know that you, you took some, right? So you fill it with water, right? Just a little bit. Nobody will notice, right? Shake it up. Same thing. And more than likely, the next time you paint, you won't feel it. So you pour a little bit more out. And I think that you can get the analogy that over time, as you add more and more water to your booze or acrylic medium, it becomes less boozy. It's going to take a lot more to get you drunk. It's going to take a lot more to get it to stick. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the glue now. So as you add water to the glue, it gets less sticky and eventually it'll turn into basically something that you can make a post-it note out of. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be the kind of glue that you'd expect. It loses the structural integrity. I really don't know if that analogy went over well or if we should use it at all. I think that it does. Do you like the booze? You do? Because you did that. No. You're just saying that because you don't want your mother to hear this. Now, while we are talking about mediums, you'll see that some of these say medium and varnish, okay? Actually, I think they all say that. Medium and varnish. We probably have a gloss. Uh, uh, we have a matte, a satin, and a gloss, okay? Let us understand what varnish means when it is a medium and varnish because it is not the same thing as a traditional varnish, which we'll talk about later. An acrylic varnish is, is fine to have, it's good to have, okay? Especially because it's multi-purpose, it's also medium. But if you're using it as your final varnish, all it's really doing is unifying the sheen, okay? You want it all to be matte, you want it all to be satin, gloss, across the board, okay? There are some mediums, acrylic mediums, that add UV blockers, that add an extra layer of light fastness protection, okay? But this is not, it's, it's a misnomer. It's not really varnish because varnish, a true varnish is designed to protect a painting, right? So you have a painting, right? And over time, dust collects on it, you know, dirt gets on it and you want to clean it. Well, when you use an acrylic varnish, all that dirt and dust is just kind of sticking to that acrylic and that's it. I mean, you wipe it with a paper towel. What you want is a removable varnish, that's something that you can strip off while taking the paint underneath and keeping that safe that way you take that stuff off, that stuff's dirty, apply a fresh layer of varnish, now the painting's clean, okay? There are a lot of different varnishes out there. Katie was actually uh, the one that suggested I talk about the uh, Liquitex spray varnishes because they're super simple to use. Um, this is a solvent-based varnish, it's removable. Even if you don't want to clean your own paintings, once you, if you use this, you can have somebody clean it for you. Uh, if you use this, there ain't no options, okay? So even if you never intend on cleaning your paintings, using this, if somebody else is going to, if you want somebody else to be able to, this is great. And also, if you're selling your art saying, hey, this has been varnished with a, you know, a solvent-based varnish, a collector might be interested in knowing that. It might add a little value, right? Who doesn't want added value? I know I do. So when you're using a varnish like this, you do need an isolation coat in between. So you finish your painting, right? Then grab your medium. I would recommend um, something in between. Like, I, well, well, what I would recommend is grabbing the medium that you intend to have your final sheen with because these removable varnishes also have sheen. So you don't want to necessarily use a matte varnish, right? And then take a solvent-based varnish gloss, it will basically dull the painting. So you probably want to stick with the theme if you know what I mean. So you finish your painting, you do a layer of an acrylic varnish as your isolation coat, then you apply your spray varnish on top of that. That is removable, um, which will allow you to clean your painting, okay? This is good stuff. You might not agree with me, but I'm telling you, it's good. Yeah, so these tools are designed to maximize your painting experience. I want you enjoying yourself while you're painting, and I want it to be easy to clean up. I want you to get the best results. A high-quality brush is so crucial, okay? The brush is an extension of you, okay? Like, like the lightsaber, right? It's an extension of you. Um, and, 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 and having a brush that will perform consistently is important. Uh, just like all the things we talked about here today. That's annoying. That's even more annoying. Katie? The more. Some of these things you might use. Are you using some of these things? Are you adamantly against it? Look, I'm still fine with you having your own opinion. I encourage you to put your opinion below of what you think are 
the most important tools an acrylic painter should have. I think it's helpful to have diversity. I also like when people are very negative because it's just fun to read, especially the fights. Katie and I love <laughs> we love reading the fights. We read them together like a like a dramatic reenactment. Yeah, yeah. Like like what what are the mean tweet things that they do on the late night shows? Yeah. Uh, so we'll do that with this video, so bombs away. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Because um, I do have a little bit of a, an ego, and it, it, can, it can bruise easily like my forearm. So yeah, we've talked about a lot of tools today, but one tool that I have not addressed is myself. I am a tool for you on Instagram, at Mike Not Jerry. What is that? You didn't see that coming? Thank you. I've used it before. Don't put that in the video. <laughs> Maybe they haven't known that. Um, where I continue to try to be a tool for you and your creativity coach. That's right. It's part of my job as the family business to ring y'all in. You're all part of the family. I don't want to like oversell people on stuff that they don't need. I really think that these are tools that every acrylic artist should have. Like, I mean that sincerely. And if we're showing this, I didn't know that we were showing this, so know that I really mean that. Um, but yeah, I think that these are tools that will make your life easier and give you better results when you use them. And that's the point of these videos. We're here for you today. We're here to talk art with you today. And um, we like to, you know, we have these up here as your reference anytime you need them, okay? So thanks so much. And uh, I'm gonna actually end the video the way I hate to end the video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Deuces. <laughs>